Dank jullie wel. Ik ben Nederlands, maar ik ga het vanavond wel in het Engels doen. When I arrived in Africa nearly 15 years ago to realize my dream of becoming a wildlife filmmaker, I really just wanted to live in the wilderness amongst the wild animals to tell their incredible stories. But over time I realized that our natural world is actually in serious trouble and that I as a wildlife filmmaker had a role to play in changing this. I had some sort of role to play, a vital role perhaps. What if I could do something more than just make beautiful wildlife films? What if my films could make a difference? With wildlife films, we create awareness, but we can also entice people from all over the world to go and travel to the last remaining wilderness areas on our planet. And with that, we play a significant role in the tourism industry, which is one of the most important economies in most countries in the world. But the question is, what kind of wildlife film would you need to make to convince your audience, wow, let's go there and see this for ourselves? Or even better, we really need to do something to protect these animals. There are two types of wildlife films, essentially. Um, you have the controversial, issue-driven, harsh reality films, great documentaries like The Cove and Green, and then you have the other ones that bring you the wonders of nature, that are about animal behavior and nature in its purest, most striking form, like series such as Planet Earth. And then my husband and I, together we specialize in making behavioral, character-driven wildlife films. We take you into the world of an individual animal because we believe that by bringing you a real intimate story of these animals and telling their trials and tribulations that we can have a lasting impact. From a place you can't imagine comes a story that's never been told. Africa keeps her secrets well. In a merciless, desolate furnace, an unexpected predator survives. These are no ordinary lions. These are desert lions. They live an enigmatic life in the vast ancient Namib around Africa's Skeleton Coast Park. With the use of satellite colors, one man's lifelong devotion reveals a coming-of-age story about five young brothers. But their future is uncertain. With adult male lions vanishing, the youngsters hold the key to the future of their kind. Safeguarded by an old lioness, who risks everything. This is Vanishing Kings, a film that took us to the Namib Desert to join desert lion researcher Philip Stander for several years to document this story about these five males from cubs to young adults. When we first came to the Namib Desert, we started an adventure that we had no idea of what we got ourselves into. With our 4x4 vehicle and a rooftop tent, we lived like nomads to follow this lion pride day in, day out, to, to document their lives as closely as possible, to really get an insight into their way of life. When broadcasters started showing interest in our film, they all asked us, so, What's the story like? What's going to happen? How does this unfold? And we said, we don't know. We follow a true story. The lions are writing the script, not us. We follow the life as they live it, their daily struggles, their triumphs and failures. We don't know how it's going to end. But the broadcasters were not impressed. They were very reluctant to come on board. Because you can imagine, it was quite a risk for them to take. Why would you pour all that money into a project that you don't even know what's actually going to happen? What if it's not interesting enough, not sensational enough for our viewers? 
We, on the other hand, were convinced more than ever that this was worth taking the risk, because the lines had shown us that we just had to take this leap of faith. Her timing, crucial. A close call for both, but the old lioness is back on her feet in seconds. This lioness was nearly 17 years old when she took that leap of faith. She was determined, it was a courageous move, but she was willing to take the risk, and so were we. So no matter what would happen, whether the broadcasters were going to come on board or not, we were running out of funds, but we knew we had to tell this true story about this remarkable Pride Alliance. Because simply put, nature is the best scriptwriter. It is never boring, it is always unpredictable and full of surprises. All it asks us is for a little bit of time. We could have never imagined writing a script that the lions eventually brought us. And this old lioness in particular, she brought us this astonishing scene with this giraffe attack, and then she also brought us the most tragic scene, when several months later she took her last breath. Now, at the end of her remarkably long life, when she is at her most vulnerable, the desert is at its most relentless. It starts to bury her even before she takes her last breath. die is one of the hardest things. But we were very grateful to bring her story to the rest of the world, to show both her at her best and at her weakest in the last part of her very tough life that she lived in the Namib Desert. And we were also grateful to see an animal being allowed to die of old age, because most desert lions die because of conflict with people. Now, Vanishing Kings 1 turned out to be a beautiful family story about a pride of lions struggling to survive in the most relentless desert. And the film ends with the five musketeers becoming independent from their mothers and starting their nomadic journey. And because they started their nomadic journey, we couldn't possibly end ours. So when we completed Vanishing Kings 1, we returned back to the desert to join Philip once again to continue following the life story of these five male lions. But all too soon, like what happens with young male lions, they venture too close to the, to the edge of the desert where rural farmers make a living with their livestock. The three males move into the mountains closer to another cattle post, where Philip can't reach them. up a disturbing signal of a collar, no longer moving. The farmers have taken revenge for their lost cattle. Bullet wounds, evidence of the trauma of the previous night.
Nature once again wrote a script that we could have never imagined ourselves. The first film had ended in hope. It was a beautiful story that ended in hope. But the follow-up was a story that ended in tra tragedy because we lost all our male lions to conflict with people. But as tragic as it was, the life story of the five musketeers that we documented over five years had a positive outcome. It brought about change. The Namibian government implemented a new human lion conflict management plan, and significant organizations finally joined forces. And now there are several rapid response teams out there actively protecting the lions and the farmers to avoid any possible conflict. We feel that Vanishing Kings has made a difference with that. So finally, we are working together. And the Lions once again showed us that by working together towards the same goal, you can achieve success. The life story of the Five Musketeers got a lot of recognition in the world. And apart from receiving some awards and an Emmy nomination for our film, we were most humbled by the recognition we got at last year's World Wildlife Day at the United Nations headquarter. The theme was Big Cats, Predators Under Threat, and our film Vanishing Kings was selected as the film for having the biggest impact on science and behavior. Nature asked for a bit of time, and we were there to give it. And that resulted in an incredible story that touched many hearts and incited change. What if I would tell you that by going on a safari to Africa, that by traveling responsibly and surrounding yourself with the most beautiful places of our natural world, that that's all it takes. What if I tell you that by going on a holiday to one of those wild places, you can make a difference too? Thank you. Thank you.